Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video. And so if for some reason you cannot tell from the title and what you see right in front of you, this is a video about VTOL aircraft. Uh, just another thing I've decided to mess around with. So uh, what you see here is actually, I think it was about the third or so version I had. Uh, I honestly think it was the most aesthetically pleasing one. Uh, but ultimately was not the best version, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more as to why that was later on. But for now, just like last video, we will show you uh, just kind of the progression of the designs. This one is the first version I came up with, very basic. Uh, only had two engines on it with the wing tips there. And uh, so it seemed pretty stable at the start. But as you started to add a bit more thrust into it, it always wanted to do a death pitch up. And at this point, you just could not control the craft anymore. And I'm sure you know what comes next. Yeah. So, number two was to add uh, stabilization thrusters back in the rear of the plane, which you can see back there if you look closely. Just two small jets. Uh, they point out to either side of the craft to help to stabilize it. But at this point, we were having a different kind of problem, as the craft always wanted to pitch over. So in uh, the third version, uh, which is what you saw at the beginning of this video, uh, we added, actually I made a mistake on that last narrative, um, there was only one stabilization engine on that last version. This one has two. You can see that now where they're facing out to either side. And so that helped to stabilize it so that we weren't automatically tilting to one side or the other. And uh, this one, as you can see, was more stable. We did start to have one of those pitches there, but we managed to come out of it. Also put reaction wheels there in the middle of the aircraft and that helps us to overcome some of the other problems that are introduced by the thrust. Now this one, like I say, was stable, but it ultimately was rather hard to maneuver, and so ultimately it's not the design that I wound up going with. Um, but I did like it aesthetically. I did think it was the most aesthetically pleasing design, honestly, but again, not uh, quite as functional as I wanted it to be. Uh, we did start to have one problem as we tried to actually land this aircraft and uh, we did wind up having one of those uncontrollable pitches at that point which although I managed to salvage the aircraft out of that as you can see here where we did not actually crash that was kind of the selling point for me as I knew I had to move on to something else and see what I could do next. So the next version involved right away switching out the Mark II for the Mark I cockpit. Main reason for that is just the increased visibility. It is the main thing I hate about the Mark II cockpit, although I like the outer aesthetics on the inside, it is terrible to try to fly with. So we tried to overcome that with Mark I here. Uh, also flip the wings down. There's really no point in doing that, but it I kind of liked the idea of it. Maybe if the engines were pointed inwards, it would stabilize the aircraft a little bit more. And also because of the redistribution of the center of thrust versus the center of gravity, we took those stabilization thrusters from the tail and brought them up towards where you see the front landing gear. <laughs> now this one right away started to have some other issues. And as you can see right there, it would flame out. And once it did that, well, there really wasn't much hope after that. So next thing was to flip those wings back up, since there wasn't really a point in it. I was hoping to overcome the rolling uh, in the event of a flame out, um, and uh, that hopefully we wouldn't wind up going over to the side. Not really sure why the flame out happened. I still don't know at this point of recording this video. I have no idea why it was happening. But again, it happened. And so once more, we were not able to overcome it and the plane comes down. 
So we tried one more thing with putting the intakes at the front, but as you can see right there, we once more had a flame out. And just confirming there, it's going out, of course, because there is no air coming in, which makes no sense because there's air intakes right there feeding it. But yeah, this one sort of just became a fireworks launcher as we see a bunch of sparks come out from our flames going out. Somehow this one did manage to go stable for a little bit. Uh, it was a nice feature at least that we could salvage the aircraft from a flame out except for this little moment here which while certainly not giving us results that we want in the long term in the short term did produce something kind of satisfying like that and the uh, last attempt to try and fix that uh, flame out problem was putting intakes that matched up with the size of the engines right on top of the aircraft but since we had another flame out that obviously wasn't going to work so we had to come up with other solutions so the next idea was to put those stabilizations of engines on the back where they started with an intake and this somehow worked i don't know why this works and the other ones didn't it really makes very little sense to me but whatever uh, we solved that problem um, did put the wings on top again trying to redistribute uh, center of thrust versus center of gravity uh, but this one ultimately wasn't going to work either. So on this one, I uh, tried to overcome it uh, by angling those engines out to the side again, so that hopefully we wouldn't start rolling to the side. Uh, release the landing gear a bit prematurely there. Starting off seemed a bit more stable. And looking good there for right now. But ultimately started to do one of those uncontrollable pitches again. And we lost this aircraft as well. So this is really the final version that we settled upon. I didn't actually mention it on the last version, so I'll mention it now. One thing you can start to notice there in the center is we actually traded out all our Mark II part parts at this point. So that we're only using Mark I parts and uh, that just allows us to actually squeeze in a bit more fuel we're not wasting anything on oxidizer as well as we were able to squeeze in a second reaction wheel that helps to make it more stable the way that this one differs from the last version is that our engines at the front are level with the ground rather than being angled they gave us a little bit more stability but the primary thing is something i really should have thought of for earlier but i didn't for some dumb reason and that is just to simply limit the thrust of the front engines to uh, be at 70% while the back ones are still blowing at 100. Uh, so this gave us much more stable flight. As you can see here, we are able to stop the aircraft very easily without pitching into one of those crazy uncontrollable dives. And uh, as we tested the maneuverability further, we could find that it could handle uh, turning around pretty easily as well as some sharper turns and uh, so we'll go ahead and test one of those turns here just to demonstrate that and starting off just trying to be careful but ultimately it did prove that you could be somewhat aggressive with this aircraft So now, of course, the ultimate test of this aircraft is to be able to land it on top of the vehicle assembly building. So coming in there, but we started to drop a little bit too soon. So putting the throttle back up so that we can make the corrections that we need to. Now the main problem with this is uh, with the jet engines and everything, they're slow to input, uh, like you put the throttle at full and then it'll be a few seconds before that really starts to take effect. So it can be hard to anticipate what exactly is going to happen. Like you see, had to cut it so that we didn't overshoot it. 
but cutting ultimately meant that we had a hard landing. Still though, we did arrive on point and we didn't break anything, which is always the most important part. Uh, last part of this was to test just the um, longer range flight of the craft. Of course I wasn't going to test just the full range of it because that would take quite a while. But I wanted to make sure they could fly good ways without something stupid happening. So we flew over here to the island with the airfield on it. And now one really neat thing about this is that uh, right now I'm not putting in any inputs into the aircraft. It's holding its altitude and its speed without any input from the pilot, which makes it beautifully stable aircraft. Uh, very good handling and uh, just became very satisfied uh, with what I wound up with here. As far as the top speed goes, um, again I'll switch to the cockpit view here so you can actually see it. We're sticking around uh, 60 meters per second. Average speed was probably 50 to 55 meters per second, which translates to right around 200 kilometers an hour or 120 miles an hour. So it's definitely not as fast as a lot of helicopters like the Apache going up to about uh, 120-ish, I think, um, or no, that was 180. Um, anyways, so a lot of combat helicopters are still a good bit faster than this thing, but given the fact that it was very stable and uh, definitely one of the most stable VTOL aircraft I had made, I was very satisfied with it at this point. Hopefully it can make something a bit faster in the future. I throw this little bit in uh, the end uh, to see if any of you were interested and in seeing how it was built. So I'm just going to walk you through a few of the key elements of this aircraft. So starting out, of course, there's Mark 1 cockpit. It goes to a fuel fuselage. We have four more fuel fuselages there uh, just to give us quite a bit of it to get us quite a ways. Anyways, um, then uses tail fins for the wings here. Of course the tail fins are inactive since using these tail fins at all would mean that you have your flight surfaces activating on the front of the wing which is typically not a good idea. So we just went ahead and disabled that. All the maneuvering of it is done by the two reaction wheels here as well as the two tail fins here on the back. 
Of course, I guess you could call the reaction wheels are somewhat cheating, but anyways, they do keep us stable. Center of thrust is right there. So it is a little bit off center of thrust from the center of mass, but the reaction wheels are able to overtake that. Uh, it's also a bit of a uh, good thing because as you saw in a lot of the earlier ones uh, the tendency was for these to push too much and cause it to roll backwards going over the center of mass kind of this way so if we have this kind of thrust pushing up and it's fighting against the center of mass which is a little bit more in front of the center of thrust here that's going to help to counteract the fact that we are tilting upwards of course these are brought down to 70% whereas these are 100% on the back here. So that way it gave us that really stable flight that you saw at, at the end of the video. Uh, one thing you do want to watch while flying, especially if you're flying long term, just make sure like with any aircraft that you're making sure that all your fuels being transferred as far forward as you want just to make sure that center of gravity stays ahead and uh, anyways we have the Juno engines for our stabilizers and the Weasleys as the main thrust here there is a ladder here at the bottom so that you can get out and not you know just fall and uh, trying to think if there's anything else um, if you're wondering how these are all attached to that is through radial attachment ports right there there's one on the bottom and then a separate one is put on the top just in the same place uh, to allow for the intake to be there on the top that way it looks like you have one full engine going through the wing even though in reality you have these two separate parts here and of course all these use medium landing gear and uh, they're just stuck to the wings here and then turned properly there's also two intakes right there at the front just for some extra air intake to help avoid all those flame outs and then this main intake back here which feeds these two engines which for whatever reason works a lot better than having those engines up at the front still don't know why but oh well so that is the aircraft there if you have any other questions about it you can leave one of the comments and i can answer the best i can um and also one thing I'm wondering too is what kind of aircraft would you guys want to see me experiment with here. Um, right now I'm trying to keep it mostly with atmospheric stuff. I'll deal with space things in the future. I mean it's not that I haven't dealt with space already, but uh, aeronautics and stuff has most of my main interest, so I'd like to mess around with that a little bit more, at least for the time being. So. Keeping that in mind, if you have any particular ideas and how or what kind of stuff you would want to see, let me know and we'll see what we can do.